Coming up on the county line, the upcoming election will determine whether or not the borough will remain a dry town. Mayor Wagner gives his this opinion. This time I'm not opposing it. Uh, I'm more concerned about my empty stores that we have downtown. Stay tuned on the county line. We visit Peter Cottontail here at Easter Bunny Lane at Crane Axe and Hermitage. And the OTR crew carries on an Easter tradition with an egg hunt in the borough park. Stay tuned. The county line is on the way. Good evening, I'm Pamela Marlowe. And I'm Nikki Pizar. Thanks for tuning in to tonight's County Line. Tavern owner Jay Bame is not the only one who wants to see a big splash in town. Reporter Danielle Adams talks to the mayor of New Wilmington, Wendell Wagner, who is now in favor of getting the town wet. The last time New Wilmington residents tried to make the borough wet, Mayor Wendell Wagner opposed the referendum. But this time around, he is supporting it in hopes of bringing more business into the area. This time I'm not opposing it. Uh, I'm more concerned about my empty stores that we have downtown. With Gilliland's Market and the Tavern closed and Isley's Restaurant up for sale, that leaves three big gaps in downtown New Wilmington. So I just feel that we need all the business that we can get, and I'd like to see that building on the corner opened again. That building on the corner is, of course, the Tavern Restaurant. The owner, Jay Bame, says having a liquor license would help his business greatly. After about 16 months of operation, it became very apparent that, that uh, it was not going to survive without uh, the addition of a, of a liquor license. And we feel very strongly that, that it is... Uh, imperative to its survival. Both BAME and Mayor Wagner feel that being able to serve liquor in the borough could mean an increase in business. Although Wagner supports the referendum, he does not think it will pass. I have great doubt about the vote, but uh, because it was so overwhelming the time before. Uh, I'm not out campaigning for people to vote for it or, or vote against it. I want the people in the community to settle that uh, one way or another. Voters will decide on the referendum on May 15th. Reporting for the County Line, I'm Danielle Adams. New Wilmington Borough Council members took advantage of their monthly public meeting this week to respond to criticism of last week's private meeting with Comcast. They discussed the possible change of the borough's cable TV system. Council member Michael Boyd says the meeting was only held to keep council members up to date. Boyd also says the borough has not asked Comcast for an offer and will involve the public when they begin to discuss details. What was supposed to be an exciting beginning for the stock car racing season has proved fatal. 25-year-old Stephen Walker Guthrie was pronounced dead at Grove City Hospital Saturday after being struck by a barrier in the pit at Mercer's Raceway in Pulaski. Meanwhile, investigators are at a disadvantage while looking into the accident. Police didn't arrive on the scene until two hours after the accident, which prevents them from collecting toxicology evidence that would determine whether drugs or alcohol were involved in the crash. The wreck is being handled as an accident. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Lawrence County is an important part of the local community. Members of the Westminster and surrounding community strike up a good time at the organization's biggest fundraiser, Bowl for Kids' Sake. A balloon artist. There it is, a magic wand. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on, big head. A caricature artist. <laughs> and people bowling, all working for a good cause. This is our major fundraiser for the year. It brings in over $20,000 typically, um, which is real important to us. We are a nonprofit organization. We don't charge anything for our services, so we're always looking for ways that we can bring money in. 
Big Brothers Big Sisters of Lawrence County started in 1994 to provide kids in single parent families with a mentor. The organization's bowl for kids' sake has grown a lot over the years thanks to the local community. We were so short on volunteers, we were pulling our hair out trying to get everything done by the time it was time to start at 12 o'clock. And now we have a multitude of volunteers, the, the kids from Westminster, the kids from the high school. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh, what can I do to help? It's really nice that the kids are getting actively involved. Big brothers and big sisters can do a variety of activities with their little, from shopping to working on homework to cooking dinner together. Volunteers Chris Cunningham and Melissa Golba's little sisters are actual sisters in real life. The time that I've had my little, it, there's been a drastic improvement and it's, her grades have gone up. She's uh, more outgoing. She wants to participate in other activities and just see different things. So I, I believe it is. I just got started with mine, but I've noticed a little difference already. And just being able to call somebody because there's no one else to call or being able to talk. So... Well, first of all, I think it's really important for people to give back to the community, and this is a really great chance for people to just do a little bit of something to help the community as a whole. Meeting three hours a week is what we ask for a volunteer. is is hardly anything when you think of what you're doing for a child that really needs it. Program director Suzanne Morozik says kids need positive role models in their lives. This is such a beneficial program to kids. It is, it, it, studies have proven over and over again that just one positive person in a child's life can make such a big difference. It helps them stay away from drugs and alcohol. It helps them have better peer relations, helps them with sh social skills, um, and it helps them go further in life because it helps them set some goals for themselves and know that there's something else out there, something more that they can strive for. It's events like the Bull for Kids' Sake that show little moments can make big magic. In Newcastle, I'm Nikki Pizar for the County Line. If you would like to become a big brother or a big sister, or make a donation to the Big Brothers Big Sisters of Lawrence County, you can call 724-657-3680 or email them at bbbslawco at excite.com. Coming up on the county line, I'll introduce you to a special holiday tradition. Our On the Road team hides some of their own Easter eggs. And get your walking shoes ready. Reporter Clarissa Hunter talks to an important local figure and previews a spring activity. Stay tuned. More Have county a great day at work, way. Mom. Oh, don't you worry. I will. I love going to work and listening to my kind of music on Titan Radio. That's right. Titan Radio brings you all the top hits of today along with local news and sports. Commercial-free hit music on 88.9 FM Titan Radio. Playing your kind of music. No one wants to be in debt, but the truth is that most of us are. For 51 one years, Consumer Credit Counseling has been in the business of helping people find their way out of debt. The professionals at Consumer Credit Counseling want to help you move on with your life. With their local office in Sharon, it's easy to get started. Visit their website, cccservices.com. That's cccservices.com. Consumer Credit Counseling, financial help in any crisis. You can control your debt. Consumer Credit Counseling will show you how. Titan Radio, check this out. Not a big Limp Biscuit fan, thought she'd get a hand on a member of Duran Duran. Titan Radio, commercial free music 24 7. On the radio, Keeping the car regularly tuned helps reduce air pollution and also saves me money on gas and repairs. But it's not just about saving money. It's about what you do with it. You're wax, sir. Environmental defense. Get green. Go to getgreen.com. While typical holidays are spent at home with family and friends, Westminster College experienced a special occasion this week in which students, faculty, and staff all got to celebrate a holiday together. A somber meal turns into a colorful celebration at Westminster College this Holy Week. Most college students head home to celebrate holidays, but students and staff at Westminster wouldn't miss the opportunity to celebrate the Passover holiday in a symbolic fashion with their family away from home. For many of us, it was a new experience and one that we apparently had all 
wanted to partake in. Um, and so that added to that, and it was just a great time. It was exactly what it was supposed to be, a gathering of friends and family. This celebration of the Passover Seder served as the first ever of its kind on campus, created originally for an education social event by students and staff at the college. Thanks to the expertise of Assistant Professor of Religion and Christian Education, the Reverend Dr. Beverly Cushman, Westminster Seder contained every sacred detail. When they couldn't achieve the authentic, they came up with a good alternative, a genuine attempt to keep the traditions of the Seder. Some communities it is common to use a chicken neck in place of a shank bone. I like beets better. <laughs> The men participating in the Seder sported the appropriate yarmulkes, while every forehead adorned with oil to make their faces shine, as oil representing fatness as a symbol of joy. Wine offered on the tables also represents the feeling of joy to gladden our hearts. The symbolic meaning of the celebration colorfully portrayed in every aspect of the evening, from the words spoken by the Papa to the saltwater bowls and even in the way the food was arranged. You will find on your plate parsley. Pick it up in your hand, dip it in the salt water to the left of your plate. Baruch Ato Adonai Alepeno Melech, creator of the produce of the earth. Eat. We had um, Jews and Christians, uh, one Parsi, uh, lots of different people uh, to gather in, in this one uh, recounting of, of the Passover story. With the four cups of wine slowly disappearing throughout the evening, the symbolism was profound as the door was opened for Elijah. While those of different faiths may not completely agree on the exact meaning of the Seder, the symbolisms portrayed on the faces of many offer promise to open doors for a continuation of this celebration. It's never been done on this campus before. I would love to see it continue. And I've had several people already say, oh, I'm coming next year. So it sounds like we've got a tradition already. A wine glass toast is fitting here in anticipation of celebrating this occasion for many years to come with the Westminster family. I'm Pamela Marlowe for the County Line. Taking advantage of spring temperatures outside this week, our On the Road crew went on a hunt for their inner child as they searched for some holiday treats of their own. For this week's On the Road, we went to the New Wilmington Borough Park. To celebrate Easter, we're going on a little Easter egg hunt. And we're going to see how many of these little guys that we can find. Let's do some egg hunting. Ouch! Here comes you got to work for that one. Hopping down the bunny trail. Nice. Nope. Hopping there you go. It's going to be a little tougher than to find it. I don't know. I don't know if they can do it. We'll see if they can live up to the challenge every girl of the ultimate Easter egg hunt. Baskets full of Easter joy. Things to make. Right. There's got to be some hard ones. Where would I hide an egg hunt? Is it in here? Oh. Got there it is. Good job. Good job. Nothing up here. Check out for you. Got one here. Oh, look at that. Came out of the bottom with me. Be careful. You oh. How the heck did that get in there? They're trying to be really sneaky about this. Just wait till we get to hide their eggs. I'm going to hide one right here. Right over here, kids. Never going to find it. I'll never find this one. I don't know what you did, but I think you found an egg. I think it just... All right, I'll give him that one. No, Whoa! Whoa! Dang, buddy, all right? Yeah. Just stuff there. tripped out an egg. That's all I got to say. I meant to. This is bad. I know. We always win at everything. I know. We can't find this one egg. 
I'm going to hand it to them. They did a really good job. Well, that'll do it for this week's On the Road from the New Wilmington Borough Park, the perfect place for not only an Easter egg hunt, but to spend time with your family. And speaking of Easter egg hunt, Dane, well, we never found that last egg. What do you think I know. That? I'm pretty uh, disappointed in our performance, but you got to hand it to you guys. We yeah. won this one. Yeah. Fair and square. We did, and uh, I think we found the perfect place for that yeah, egg. We hit that egg in the perfect place. Where did you hide it anyway? Hey, I guess you'll never know, will you? Well, we'll see you next time. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! I wonder what they hid in those eggs. No, I don't know. <laughs> Westminster's Relay for Life is less than two weeks away, but months go into planning the day-long event. Reporter Clarissa Hunter sits down with American Cancer Society's Jim Leslie. Welcome to County Close Up. I'm here with Jim Leslie. He's the Community Income Development Specialist. That's a very long title for you, <laughs> but thank you for coming with us and joining us tonight. Sure, thank you for having me. All right, what do you do at the American Cancer Society with that title? Uh, well, that title, I'm a fundraiser, basically. Uh, there's very little staff. Uh, the American Cancer Society is really a volunteer organization. So the staff, we try and help the volunteers as much as we can and manage them to raise the money to fight this disease. Very good. Relay for Life is coming up here at Westminster. It's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things at springtime. And can you tell us a little bit about it and what you can do during the day? Because I know there's walking around the track and luminaries, but what else goes sure. on and what is Relay for Life? Okay, it's lots of fun. Relay for Life originally, uh, at most places, it's a 24-hour event, but because there are no lights at the Westminster Stadium, it's a 12-hour event. So it starts, uh, it's April 14th, starts at 10 in the morning, we'll go to 10 at night. Um, at 10 o'clock, we'll have opening ceremonies. President Williamson usually comes down and gives us a little pep talk, gets us going. Uh, at noon is the survivor's recognition lap, and that's when we clear the track of all the people, the teams that are walking, recognize just the survivors on the track and, and cheer them on in their battle. And then uh, at dusk is um, the luminary ceremony. Uh, that's a more emotional ceremony. The rest of the day is really pretty much a celebration of life. It's a very happy event, a lot of stuff going on. Titan radio broadcast from there. We have a dunking booth, uh, dunk tank. Um, and actually, I just found out the chief of police of New Wilmington is going to be in there. So that's going to, if any of you guys have uh, revenge <laughs> that you want on a ticket, uh, you can be down there. There's also food available for sale. Uh, a lot of the teams will have other fundraisers, Chinese auction, uh, silent auctions. Um, it's just a lot of fun, a lot of games going on, so come down and join us. So I know that you can buy luminaries. How much are they? Cause I know at the end they spell out a word. Yes. Uh, the luminary are a $5 donation. Uh, in the visitor stand, we spell out the word hope. Uh, and we also line the track with the luminary because they light the track. They light the way to the cure. Okay, so how is the American Cancer Society involved with the Relay for Life? It is our signature fundraising event. Uh, last year, just in western Pennsylvania, Relay for Life raised over, or in Pennsylvania, I'm sorry, raised over $16 million just in Pennsylvania. Uh, and we got back more than that in research. So it's a, it's a good thing to do. All right, how can people get involved with the American Cancer Society? As a volunteer, uh, we have an office in Newcastle, it's in the Shannock Township. We just moved there in September on Wilmington Road. Uh, there's always office help that's needed. Uh, a lot of data entry for the relays. Uh, each person that participates gets a record on file in the, in the computer system. So a lot of data entry. Um, as far as volunteering for the day of the event, that's always welcome. Uh, we also do daffodil days in uh, March. Other events in Lawrence County, there's another relay uh, in the Shannock Township in May and one in Elwood City in June. Uh, we have an auction gala in the fall, so there's lots of stuff to get involved with. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Jim, for coming and sure. joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. More County Line is on the way. Thank you. Seven years ago. Yeah! Thank you.
history is a little scary? Then log on to LOC.gov and see how much fun it can be. The Library of Congress at LOC.gov. Everyone should have a plan for what to do if disaster strikes. And if you have pets, you should have one for them too. Always have up-to-date identification on your dog or cat. Keep current color photos of your pets with the rest of your emergency supplies. If you know danger is coming, get your dogs on a leash and your cats in a carrier as soon as possible. Remember, your pet is safest when it's with you. This message brought to you on behalf of the Lawrence County Humane Society. Check it out, man. What is that? It looks like someone's belly. Yeah, probably lost it walking on the beach. Man, just leave it. Let's go. Good evening and welcome to another exciting edition of Titan Town Sports. I'm your host, Danielle Adams. Let's kick things off with the Lady Titans softball team. Monday night, they took on the Ursuline Arrows in a doubleheader. The girls tied the series one and one, giving up three runs in the seventh inning, causing them to lose the first game four to one. But the Lady Titans regained their composure and came back to win the second game 7-2. Senior Jennifer Pancake finished the game with three hits, while senior Kristen Zakowski, freshman Sarah Woodward, and Addie Parker had two hits each. Despite suffering her first loss and four decisions on the game, Pancake still earned pack honors as the pitcher of the week. She threw 21 innings with no walks and seven strikeouts in a six-game streak. Pancake and the rest of the Lady Titans head down to W&J Saturday to take on the Lady Presidents. While softball is a sport that most people are familiar with, tennis is a sport that not many people understand. Titan Town sports reporter David Gregg caught up with the Westminster College men's Titan tennis team to learn more about the sport. I played a lot of sports. My parents got me involved in when I was younger. I played soccer, football, um, hockey, but tennis just kind of stuck because um, when I was in middle school, my mom saw a advertisement for a kind of like a summer program in my hometown town of Meadville. So you just kind of went up there and hung out with other kids and taught you how to play. It was just really interesting, so I kept playing. Well, I'm here with Nate down at the tennis course at Westminster College, and I personally play baseball, so mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any similarities. So I'm used to holding it. I'm used to holding the, you know, right. holding it like that. So that's actually that would be a good grip for your backhand. For a backhand. Yeah. Now on the backhand, a lot of people, including me, typically use both hands, one towards the top, one towards the bottom, just depending if you're left-handed or right-handed. We're going forehand. It's just you bring the hand down. Right. Use one like hand. It. For a forehand, I was always taught it's like you're shaking hands with the racket. So you just kind of grip towards the bottom, like this. And for a forehand shot, you just Grip towards the bottom, swing up. And in our extra innings tonight, congratulations go out to sophomore Mike Busen, who was named Pack Hitter of the Week. Busen batted 600 with four RBIs in a weekend series against Waynesburg. Busen and the rest of the baseball team will be back in action this weekend as they take on the W&J Presidents for a three-game series. And speaking of presidents, the Pittsburgh Penguins have named David Morehouse as their new president. He will help with the redevelopment of the new Penns Arena. And finally, in extra innings tonight, the legendary Grambling State University coach Eddie Robinson passed away Tuesday night at the age of 88. He coached at GSU for nearly 60 years. Well, that's all the time we have left for this week. Join us again next week. As always, same time, same channel. Stay tuned. More County Line after the break. Keeping my car regularly tuned helps reduce air pollution and it also saves me money on gas and repairs. But it's not just about saving money, it's about what you do with it. You're whack, sir. 
Environmental Defense. Get green. Go to getgreen.com. One day these rats were playing in the woods. One of some matches and that's no good. Yeah. So one of the gorgeous forces, what you decide. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. Yeah. Only you can prevent forest fires. Fire. Properly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution, but more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks. Ow! Environmental Defense. Get Green. Go to GetGreen.com. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit AmericasLibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Picture yourself at Westminster College. Westminster offers an educational experience that is second to none. We've been exceeding students' expectations for 150 years. Westminster combines the prestige of a national liberal arts college with the personal attention you deserve. Westminster is a national leader in graduation rate performance and is the most affordable national liberal arts college in Pennsylvania. Visit Westminster's beautiful 300-acre campus to experience an ideal learning environment. Succeed at Westminster College. Whether you're a young child or grown adult, anyone can enjoy the sights and sounds of Easter. For proof, the County Line's Chris Norris took a stroll through Easter Bunny Lane in Sharon. There's a reason that Crane Axe and Hermitage is called the store for all seasons. While Santa Claus is at the North Pole refreshing his naughty and nice list, the Easter Bunny comes to town with the opening of Easter Bunny Lane here at Crane Axe. Holiday enthusiasts travel each and every Christmas to Crane Act Christmas Land during the winter, but come springtime, Easter Bunny Lane is a tradition for many as well. It's a nice tradition to bring my kids here and let them see what I saw growing up. I have a 15 and a 21 year old and I did it with them and now I'm doing it with her. Hey. <laughs> her? This is Katie Reavers. in there? She enjoys spending time with her fluffy-tailed, long-eared friend. I'm taking my picture with Tiger, and these are blind boys, too. And she can't get her. He was big, so I asked him in his wrap. Sounds like Katie is having a good time, and she's not the only child making the most of their visit. A lot of the kids really enjoy the pirate section, and um, they also enjoy uh, the farm with all the John Deere things. And, and usually with kids, it's a lot of color. Anything that has a lot of color really attracts them. At Easter Bunny Lane, you can experience the sounds, sights, and scents of the season. We used uh, a scent technology, so you should have smelled smell like chocolate. Candy. Many visitors to Easter Bunny Lane appreciate the display that reminds us of the meaning behind the holiday. I say that, that Jesus um, gave his life for us, that he, he is the light of the world, and having no Jesus in Easter is like having Christmas without Christ. It's the most important thing. I mean, the kids need to know that it's not just the candy and the eggs and the Easter money. That's all the fun stuff about it, but it's all about Jesus and, you know, what he did for us. We are proud to be able to present that, and although the story doesn't change as written, we can reinterpret it in different ways, and the interpretation in the last room this year, we were very pleased with the way it came out. Though Easter is most appealing for its bright colors, candy, and a visit from the Easter Bunny, it's important to remember what the celebration is really about. I'm Chris Norris, reporting for the County Line. A suggestion was brought up at the new Wilmington Borough meeting this week to include a public restroom in the downtown sector of New Wilmington. Mayor Wendell Wagner suggests a handicapped accessible portage on. Police Chief Carmen Piccarillo hopes to include a security light as well. Discussion on the proposal will continue in the coming weeks. That's all we have for this week's County Line. We'll be back after Easter. Next week, our On the Road crew will take a trip down on the farm. Also, in addition to the school workload, several students are finding some spare time to help the less fortunate. And Titan Town Sports gets you up to date with the spring sports season. Have a safe and happy Easter. Have a good night. Have a good night.
Jesus. So.